Welcome to RecCast, a video podcast series about all things AI in recruitment, brought to you by RecRite. Hi, and uh, welcome to this episode of RecCast, the podcast series where we explore the use of AI in recruitment, uh, looking at both the opportunities, ethical considerations, and pitfalls. I'm your host, uh, Jussi Luhtisla, and with me, I have my co-host and colleague, Mika Tuomola, online. And today, we have a very interesting guest, as Ida husberg Vekkolan joins us. She's a CEO and the founder of Curious Talent. And according to their LinkedIn profile, they say that Curious Talent was born with a mission to close the net zero talent gap. Their vision is to be a platform connecting uh, curious and purpose-driven talent with companies committed to ambitious sustainability goals. Quite an interesting, uh, uh, interesting description. And I'll, I'll actually let Ida, you talk a bit of, more about the company and your own background. But to kick things off, could you, Please tell us a bit about your personal background. How did you end up in recruitment and HR tech in the first place? Yes, thank you, Jussi, for having me here and Mika as well. Uh, so basically, uh, where should I start? I started in the management consulting industry back in the days. I had different uh, sales and account management opportunities there, booked some sales calls at trainer's house, and then uh, basically went into recruitment in startups and scale-ups. So have been working the past years in really international uh, scale-ups and high-growing uh, startups. And basically, there I there I found many different things I wanted to solve. And that's why we founded Curious Talent, because we felt that the market and the workforce structure currently, the systemic way how we do things, it just doesn't uh, work for the future of the workforce. So that's why we wanted to, wanted to found Curious Talent. But... Um, I've done a lot of different things, have been sourcing in many different global areas, mm-hmm. uh, really niche talent or commercial uh, leader leaders. So basically, practically everything around everywhere. <laughs> That's a short description of what I've done. Can you talk a bit about Curious Talent then? Uh, how many founders are you and what kind of roles do you typically yeah, go yeah. after? So basically, Curious Talent, we, are, we founded in uh, October uh, mm-hmm. last year and basically soon, uh, one year old actually. And I have a co-founder, Andrew, Andrew Bernhardt. So he's the CEO of uh, Curious Talent and he joined uh, this year, this spring. And uh, now we have a team of seven people currently right. uh, working on the, on the platform. And we had a MVP release uh, actually two weeks ago or last week. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and basically, it's a really, really early, early stage. And now we have pilot companies we are working with, but we are still figuring out many of the things how can we how can we solve this big problem that we are facing and mm-hmm. we we have a lot on the roadmap a lot of like things we want to we want to bring change into but this is just the first step and really we are really mvp stage really interesting moment. can you talk a bit about the vision for the product so what have you today as an mvp and what's the kind of where are you aiming at yeah so currently with the mvp we uh currently have jobs on the platform and yeah. basically our main part is the ai coach that we have on the platform as well so mm-hmm. basically in order for us to help people to transition to roles and find skills that are transferable and skills that are are unique and and uh, they can, can contribute true in these growing roles we of course have to help them to understand how, what what is their career identity what kind of skills do they have mm-hmm. where can they contribute how can they utilize their existing experience and existing industry experience to these growing roles that are coming currently right. all the time. So there's a huge gap. And if we think about many jobs are being, uh, uh, how would I say, uh, they are they are disappearing and many jobs are being uh, being born. So we, we just have to figure a way, a way how to bridge the gap there. Yeah, so we're kind of helping doing. people to navigate uh, perhaps to a new career or at least a new role. Yeah. And help them to look at their vast experience and, and yeah. how might that fit into something that didn't exist five, yeah. ten years ago. Yeah. And also for companies, uh, many companies usually recruit a lot of like industry experience. And if we think about innovation, you don't, when you work with innovation, you don't always have a benchmark of talent out there that you mm-hmm. can go and like headhunt or, or try to recruit. So you have to think about skills. You have to think about the potential, the learning ability, and also the curiosity of people. So. So um, we also have to teach companies to look at talent in a really different way, to yes. look at skills yeah. differently yeah. And, and more flexibly. So that's what we are trying to do with companies. And then uh, for talents, we are trying to help their, um, them help them identify what kind of skills do they have and where can they contribute and what are the gaps that they need to bridge. To, to be How do you do there. that skills analysis? Do you like uh, do you have tests or you obviously look at the CVs and profiles, but do you go how deep do you go in analyzing people's skill sets? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. So currently we are not yet uh, so in-depth in the technology regarding mm. that, but we of course do have a big, big, big plans around that. But where we currently uh, focus on is also like the industry, unique industry, trends, industry needs, industry insights. And yeah. when you understand industries and companies, unique elements, you can quite uh, well already now with existing AI, you can quite well uh, understand how could those they be kind of like uh, matching mm. there. But mm. of course, in the future, we are looking out to develop own uh, proprietary AI technology to become uh, to build this really intelligent um, algorithm here to help, to help us bridge this like help with skills and skill identifications but we don't have any tests or something like that and we uh we are basically thinking that through ai and building the ai, AI technology we are able to do that quite seamlessly we yeah. have tests yeah so that's the vision but of course we are not there yet and we have a lot to do and now currently only on the mvp stage but we have big visions regarding that that's interesting so we are kind of, or you are kind of getting to one of my favorite topics to finally get rid of the CVs. Because yeah. <laughs> if we think of like a traditional CV, it's basically nothing that you mentioned already, like the proper skills and everything that the people like actually know, because yeah. like we know CV is only like a historical data that where have you been, but not what have you done basically. Or yeah. So yeah, that's interesting. Uh, why Why did you, decide to do it now? Was it like um, the AI boom that, hey, now it's a good time? Or was it like the net zero sustainability uh, talks, uh, like going to the level that, hey, now it's time and now you now we can see the gap there. So what was like the like the original reason to build uh, to found the company now? Yeah, well, that's a really good question. So now um, the timing was both actually on, on both of the both of the elements. So basically, uh, I spoke a lot with really experienced uh, talent out uh, in, in Europe. And basically, everyone had the same like struggle that how do I how do I uh, how do I how do I get into roles that are in these sustainable trends currently? I want to do meaningful things with my my experience. I have a lot of experience, so I want to do meaningful things. So that was the that was the thing that they were they were uh, saying to me. And then they also said that it's so it's so weird how you have to have this industry experience to be qualified for those, even if you have really ex extensive relevant experience that you could uh, directly take into those different fields and maybe also bring new innovations to those fields. So so there was this huge there is this huge uh, gap currently that people are not able to move flexibly around different industries mm -hmm. and roles mm -hmm. and i think that is hindering uh, a lot uh, the current uh, current uh, trends and then also because when when the ai boom started i was thinking that okay now is the time this has to this has to be <laughs> done now but of course we are bootstrapping so things are taking uh, going much slower than i would of course expect but but uh but the timing is right now and and if you think about the next three to five years uh we have a lot of work to do for the future workforce and i think that there's this we are already a bit late on on many of the things no but that, i guess that's one also one of the i don't think first of all you guys are late you're right on time uh, yeah. i guess that's one of the findings we had a with mika we had a we kind of had the session together after our Fair, fair amount of episodes we did in the spring this year and we kind of pulled things together and what we heard from many people and that's actually one thing I think Mika you mentioned or uh, one of our guests mentioned that actually there are a lot of AI and especially LLM based tools out there helping that are meant to help recruiters yeah. but many of them are still quite on they're not they're not solving any major issues yet let's put it this way except writing text of course you can you, can, you if you want to have chat gpt to produce your job ads yes that's that's efficient but we, that was one of the things we discussed mika that the tools are not very mature yet yes and the fact discussing a lot with the ats vendors and hr system vendors the fact is that it's basically chat gpt or copilot or or yeah. something at the moment which probably is a good thing as well because the it takes time to develop the technology so that you can actually get more like a meaningful data from the ai so that's why it's, in many cases it's good to have only like a text producing and some kind of a tips but provided by ai but yeah that's true and uh, and I, I'm, I'm sure that like curious talent and many other companies will show us that like the next 
step of the AI development in the HR tech as well. Yeah, because you still need to have a problem that you solve. If you yeah. just build AI for the sake of AI, and in this case, AI recruitment, that doesn't really, yeah, that chimes nicely with investors and perhaps you get visibility on press, but you still are not solving any, any problem. You guys have identified yeah. that this talent gap and bringing people from uh, with that different backgrounds, you know, careers are long, that 30, 40 years and the needs for, especially in professional uh, kind of white collar jobs changed quite a lot during 30, 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What's the business model? I understand kind of the business B two B side of things. Uh, that's the, I kind of same as we do. You sell a tool to a company and then they pay on a SaaS basis or something. They pay for recruitment or per position or however you price it. But I would imagine is there is there a business model towards the applicants or is it? Mm, yeah, but uh, currently this pilot phase, we uh, of course companies can join for free, yeah. and also talents can join for free. Uh, but we do have uh, this pay as you go model that for every interview uh, you have a small a small fee. So basically, right. we are building it on that it on the that company way. Company side pays. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they then also have these uh, uh, unlimited. If you want to have unlimited number of interviews, then you have a monthly subscription. So that is Correct. our current uh, okay. model for for. Uh, businesses but talent is free yeah. and we are of course still testing testing everything out and we are still early stage and a pilot with pilots so so uh so yeah but have you seen that this pitch that you have resonates better in certain industries mm, well actually we have now uh, started to focus on climate startups because yeah. when you work with startups they have uh, you hire many many different many many people at quite high high pace but then you also uh, in startups you can also uh, join them with like more potential and more like learning uh, drive. So basically, that is what we also uh, have now identified that maybe startups are currently the first first way to enter the market, mm -hmm. and after that, then uh, larger companies. Uh, yeah. But the whole Europe is our market. All right. So you kind of start. That's. Yeah. I guess that's one of the learnings for Rec, right over the past twelve years that. Yeah. Go international as early as possible. Not after 12 years, yeah. let's put it this way. <laughs> of yeah. course, we have international clients, but we should should have done more much earlier. Yeah, but also like with, with also the startup segment is, of course, also that uh, there you have uh, a lot of, lot of that is in English, a lot of that is already like the same language. Yeah. So basically, you don't have this really niche localization aspects there if you, so that's why we also... Uh, Right. And, and we feel that we can help there at the moment because many of the startups they don't uh, they don't have the resources to get their missions out there. They don't have the resources to 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 get all the things that they are doing out there to the mm -hmm. knowledge of the talent that they need. So that's why we also feel that that is where we now exactly can can help. Does your tool also help uh, the companies to craft the job descriptions, or is that something you kind of take as given from outside of the tool? Yeah, that is what they uh, we basically take jobs from their career page right. and then add it. Add and it then there. you start working on it. Yeah, yeah, and then of course we can uh, we can of course add to the, uh, add to our platform different company elements that they want to want our coach to know about their brand, employer brand or mm. team vision, like uh, values, all those things. So basically, yeah. we can take those into the pre qualification part. So is there a human element as well? Is there a coach there or? Yes, so that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our, of course, our uh, coach, but we also now, at least at the current stage, uh, why we also might not be really venture fundable at the moment, it's because we do have a human element in yeah. in here. So we want to uh, we want to make sure that our our platform is working in a correct way. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure it's the right kind of matches. So we feel that there needs to be a human element there in that part of the process before any kind of uh, candidate company. Um, uh, uh, connections and and then also we do our building like community part but of course community takes a lot of time to to build so we we are always starting with with that yeah yeah it would be <clears throat> and yeah i was just about to ask the same but you see you see mm -hmm. got there first that is there human element but uh it would be really in, or it will be really interesting to see kind of a community built around the ca candidates but also I'm not 100% sure. Did you mention that you are have some kind of a plans to monetize the candidate side as, as well at some point? Or will it be free forever because there has been like hundreds and hundreds of companies who has tried to monetize the candidate side, but, but no one has actually like succeeded in that. So it's interesting to see what are your plans on that. 
Yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, I don't think that we all yet have all the answers <laughs> to, to that. But of course, like when we think about where we are, we are like in the in between uh, recruitment and, and uh, education. And uh, uh, so basically, there's many, of course, many different opportunities. But at the moment, we just really want to ensure that we have enough volume and we are developing the technology in a way that we, we want to see it uh, being developed. And uh, and uh, yeah, so currently we don't have at the moment plans yeah. to monetize. Yeah, because it's it's just one of those things that people are paying 24 Netflix, 24 Amazon and so on. And if someone asks them to pay yeah. three euros for finding a better job, they're no, no, I'm not going to pay. <laughs> yeah. So it's like... Yeah, that might not, <laughs> might not uh, bring so much value. And, and of course, like, uh, yeah, uh, at the moment we don't have plans for that. Yeah. There could be a quite a natural way for you to explore whether we be, some segments of job seekers would be willing to pay for some sort of coaching services or stuff like that not yeah. kind of human plus computer kind of combinations yeah but like mika said there's been quite a few try different kind of things around there it seems always that the companies are the ones where you get the money from yeah yeah i, I would say so and they also have the big need at the moment of course like talent also have the need but uh but where the systemic change is happening is with the company yeah, so, yeah. so and they have the really like business critical needs so with that kind of background uh, and uh, kind of understanding a bit more about your company uh, yeah. and, and, and the product how would you say in general well, kind of loaded question knowing what you guys do but how would you say in general that where do you draw the line in recruitment between kind of fully automated ai based stuff and human work how do you how do you see this kind of going forward yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't sure if I have the uh, have the answer to that. I have been actually thinking about the topic a lot, uh, also because I have listening to 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 your episodes here. But uh, I think there's a lot of things we can do with AI that can make things automated and mm -hmm. and um, and more intelligent in many different ways. But also just an example when I was uh, looking for freelancers to work with our product. Uh, uh, so uh, from a freelance uh, platform almost everyone had the same introduction and mm. there was like no uh there was no differentiate written introduction yeah, yeah yeah and i was like okay so who should i choose about <laughs> of all, all of these hundred like they have exact same description yeah so so i'm not uh, i don't know if that answers the question but but like um it requires a lot of authenticity in one way or another and that's dif difficult to do that you can do that with ai but it also uh, requires some human elements there too. Mm. Yeah, and you mentioned that your product, uh, you kind of said that you're not that VC fundable as you are, yeah. you don't see yourself as being that VC fundable as you have a human element to it, but that kind of also yeah. indicates that you don't fully want to trust on AI either. Uh, well, not at this point, and and we are still really early stage. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so at this point, we wouldn't we, we wouldn't do that. But also, I've been thinking about like interview notes and note taking and all these things. So I'm I'm really worried about the security part of mm. uh, all the sensitive information that uh, can leak in these uh, interview notes taking uh, tools. Uh, no one, no one, no company can actually like know what is being said to what tools in what like. So I think that's a huge, uh, huge issue. And also, it also puts employee uh, like uh, candidates in quite an unequal stage because can you really decline note taking uh, in an interview or not? So will that affect like the decisions or something like that? So that was someone who told me that exact thing in a in a meeting. So so uh, uh, so there's interesting elements regarding that. And I think the security part and, and that is something that we should discuss more about. But I think we are in a as, as being in the European Union, it's it's good that there is that we again get to mention the AI Act of European Union. Because I've yeah. had some discussions with the US-based company and one company from South Africa, and they were like amazed that do you really have that kind of an act that says that AI cannot make the decision and so on. So I think it's a good good thing, but it also might affect the efficiency of the development of AI in, in Europe Union. But I still think that it's a good thing to have some kind of a legislation to look after the uh, safety side of things as well. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's true. Yeah, it's interesting because 
I guess one of the premises of this podcast is also to understand how far you can go. And of course, we've been talking about how far you can use use yeah. AI in video video recruitment, and you know, it's, it's special, like you mentioned, transcribing subtitles, so forth, and where pro- probably depending on the tool you use, data protection, info security is important, but probably is okay as long as long as you kind of. But then, like I said, note taking. And especially summaries from the notes that have been taken. That's already st- be starting to, you know, if somebody talks for an hour in a in a job interview, and you get three bullet points. Yeah. That's not written by a person. That's written by AI. And then you base your recruitment decision on that. Is the bullet points already recruitment kind of computer making quite a lot of decisions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they this? How do how does the computer decide what they put there? Yeah. And how do yeah. they know that that is exactly the relevant thing yeah. or exactly that role and not exactly that impact? So Have you had these yeah. conversations with your customers, prospects, investors? Mm, no, no, not at the moment actually. Uh, no, but I have been thinking about that myself because yeah. of course I also utilize uh, utilize different tools and so forth. Not actually in recruitment area like that, but uh, but for um, other work. <laughs> so uh, so uh, how. Sometimes I just feel that like it doesn't put the essence there that I would like to see yeah. as the essence. So, yeah. so uh, but yeah, really interesting uh, topics. And going back to what you mentioned earlier, uh, we see the same, or we hear the same from our customers that, uh, that they receive a lot of very quite good quality applications that yep. are clearly written by. So I guess the average quality of job applications on CVs goes up if everybody puts it through ChatGPT. Yeah. But what's the kind of point when it all looks the same then afterwards? Yeah. It's like I said, really hard to stand out with those applications. And yeah. then when you have hundred similar applications, how do you pick the three for your next stage or, or whatever? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Also, we like education. I uh, think I saw one of your comments somewhere on, on LinkedIn. Uh, also, like regarding, for example, education, if, um, uh, how would I say, uh, if you use a lot of these tools and you don't do the, mind work yourself mm. so at some point you have a big gap with what you produce and what you really know yeah and then uh so uh, <laughs> so like uh that's also going to be interesting for the future to just see how things how these go because of course when we learn we have to reflect that we have to continuously use it in one way or another and and and, and so forth but if we always rely on different tools will we then develop our own thinking enough uh yeah good point so that's and it's so easy to produce texts with say ChatGPT, for example, yeah. for going back to education or even schools. And if you would give school students the tools, which kind of they need to be learned to how to use, but they still need to kind yeah. of learn how to use their own brain as well and produce the text themselves, which is yeah. much, much tougher and heavier. Yeah. Yeah. The, the HubSpot outbound event is going on at the moment, and I saw some kind of uh, photo of a presentation or something like that. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think that the message was quite clear that already like 90% or over 90% of the written content doesn't get any visitors. And like almost 90% of the social media content doesn't get any conversions at the moment. So it's full of, basically the written content is dead already. Or if we think it from the, like the business perspective, of course, the written words will always be there but if we think of the business perspective and i think the consensus in the in the um, hr or recruitment industries that also that the application letters the cover letters are dead already you don't you don't just need them anymore there is no it's so much resources wasted that you first write the job ad with ai candidate writes an application with ai and then some kind of a co-pilot ai goes through the application so it's, it's no there's no need for that anymore so. yeah and then think of if you have like let's say you have a combination of a linkedin profile good few minutes of video uh let's say an automated reference check uh, with some comments from real persons who there are quite good tools for that perhaps a skills test you as a recruiter have a ton of information that's much much more valuable yeah than a a four of text exactly written by chat gpt yeah and it doesn't know anything about your aspirations where do you where are you going through going for like what is the direction that you take so they don't know anything about that part so mm. so the potential aspect there as well yeah yeah <laughs> How, how do you see that the 
I know that you have a long background in recruitment and it's not that related to your, your new business, but how do you see that the recruitment is going to change now that the AI is, is everywhere? Like, what do you think? Well, yeah, that's a good question. I think about that all the time. And uh, of course, we also are, are in, in the recruitment in that way, but like, uh, it's going to move forward to authentic, authentic uh, communities, authentic uh, discussions. Of course, you have video, so that is like something that can stand out. But I think the recruitment field needs huge development. It's kind of currently completely broken. Uh, so so I think it has to move, come back to the part that why do we recruit and and uh, and, and what is it that we need? And, and also like for, for talents to really dig deep into also their own career identities because there are so many people who have to reskill uh, they have to find new directions in their careers so uh, go to different trainings learn unlearn things and, and like there's huge change currently so i think that uh, everyone has to adapt and uh, unlearn a lot of a lot of stuff <laughs> could you elaborate a bit what you mean by recruitment being broken uh, yeah well with well, of course, currently, like there's huge, for example, uh, uh, um, war for talent in specific, like uh, talent groups, but also the part that we have a lot of tools that are creating things that that uh, other tools are assessing. So mm -hmm. basically, that it doesn't mean <laughs> make any sense in whatsoever way. And uh, there's a huge mismatch with like what is required and what is on the market and, and how we perceive that what is on the market. So we don't see things flexibly enough. And, and that is also one way. And also the uh, the industry experience, if we look for innovations, we can't, uh, we can't expect that we have that on the market. So like, the numbers just don't add up. Yeah. And I don't know how to solve this. And if we all go and hunt for the same small talent group that has that specific experience everyone wants to have, it will increase costs, it will lead to job hopping, and it will like hinder the progress for everyone. Yeah. So I mean that that's like a running <laughs> pipe. I don't know how yeah, to yeah. how to yeah, I understand. describe that. Yeah, but it's a, it's it's it is a strange situation that there's like more unemployed people than ever before, or I, I don't know yeah. ever before, but but anyway, like yeah. modern times, there at least in Nordics, there is like more people without a job, but still there is war for talent, and in some cases, yeah. the war for talent is for pretty basic roles. Actually, it might be that it's like a business controller, which is anyway pretty much the same business controlling, regardless of the industry. Basically, you are playing with the same numbers and so on. So that that keeps amazing me that mm. how, how it's not going to the better, better way. Yeah, exactly. And that's where we come to the skill based hiring. I believe that there's so much potential in skill based hiring. If you hire for skills, you are most likely get to get a motivated a long term employee in your team. They are going to be super curious to learn more about the, the field or the role or like, you know, I mean, it's also a social impact aspect mm -hmm. when we hire for skills mm -hmm. and, and uh, look at the potential that we have. I mean, everyone wants to do a good job yeah. at the end of the day. But who will drive the change for if you say that recruitment is broken and you mentioned that the change is needed we all know that the change is needed but who will drive it will it be uh companies will it be recruitment function or hr function and or will it be someone else that's i find interesting that who will do that yeah that's a good question we of course have also uh identified that uh who who wants to who wants to invest in that change so so uh but i, I see that it's it requires a, a ecosystem of many it requires the university networks it requires definitely the companies and uh, and also uh, talents because they have to also maybe uh look at where is where are the growing industries and where could i transfer into because some some roles and some industries will not uh, grow and there will not be jobs so so there's many people also who have to have to uh think about new career direction in many different ways. But that's yeah. interesting. And if you're kind of starting to head towards the end of our podcast is today, but I think yeah. putting a bit of your kind of a career coach hat on and thinking from the talent side of things or the other yeah. kind of a job seeker side of things, how do you uh, 
go about first of all finding perhaps a new industry or new thing for you and how do you highlight the skills that you have but your cv doesn't kind of do you have any good practices good tips on how to how to kind of make yourself stand out in a situation where your cv doesn't say that i'm a good fit for this role yeah so well, that's what our platform is, uh, <laughs> is <laughs> hoping to hoping to do uh, do in a really good way and uh what was the first question? So, uh, how do you kind of find the first of all? Fine. If, if, if yeah. you are, let's say, if you are in an industry that where you see that your jobs are declining, yeah, how do you find yeah. something new? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, there of course our platform is uh, in the future able to to serve that intelligence in a in a much in depth way than, than currently. But uh, but basically, uh, it also requires discussions with people from mm. different fields. So mm. basically, sometimes you don't even know what kind of options you have and what kind of roles are available in different fields if you don't uh, uh, discuss about them with someone, if you don't uh, learn about these things. So, for example, if someone has worked in one industry in one specific role, uh, they don't. They might even know what all the different options they have. Yeah. And that's why where the discussion with networks and communities and, uh, and uh, other peers in different fields uh, can help yeah so yeah and then i would say where where it applies also things like portfolios or previous kind of evidence of previous jobs done depending on what what your skills are yeah. are kind of helpful for the recruiter as well to understand hey this person has done well these kind of things totally different industry yeah but they could be doing these kind of things for us as well yeah yeah, yeah exactly and there's always the context where you have been using a specific skill and uh, how uh, relatable or near near is it to these other different skills. So like what has been the context, what has been the responsibilities and the actual uh, tasks of that specific skill and, and how near and far is that transferred to specific other areas. So that's yeah. what we want to, to, of course, also academia bring in the future to that. Yeah, and then about. when you get perhaps critical mass in your tool, you can see that, you know, these kind of paths have been common and then you could yes. kind of start to suggest based on that, that you of course need yeah. some data on that. But. Yeah, but from job descriptions, you get quite a lot of good data on what are the requirements currently, yeah. and which are growing. Interesting. Yeah. If we ask the last question that I think <laughs> we have asked from all the guests so far, if we think of um, five years time, 2029, Will the recruiter still be needed? I think that recruiters will always be needed. <laughs> there always is. There's always space for uh, people who are ambassadors for uh, the talent and ambassadors for the companies. And we both we all know that it's a huge bottleneck if we don't find uh, people to execute on the growth missions and and plans. So I believe that we are needed recruiters. <laughs> Thank you. I think we have covered a lot of ground today, and this is a good time to wrap things up. Thank you, Ida, for joining us and sharing your, sharing your insights with us. And thank you, Jussi. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Remember to subscribe to RecCast in your podcast platform, Spotify, iTunes, whatever you are using, or YouTube. And also follow RecRite in LinkedIn to see what we are doing. Thank you.